Literally one right here. Motel Life by Willie Vlautin. Or Vlautin. I'd actually meant to review this book a while ago. I read it back in November, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure November. Uh, and yeah, I just, I got caught up in the whole holiday season and whatnot. And, but, um, I definitely did uh, enjoy this book. Of course, there is a movie adaptation. Uh, it's also, it also has the same title, The Motel Life. Uh, the movie adaptation stars Emil Hirsch and Stephen Dorff and Dakota Fanning, Chris Christopherson. And, uh, the Motel Life, it's pretty much just about these two brothers. Uh, one is Frank, the other is Jerry Lee. Frank is the youngest, Jerry Lee the oldest. And they live in Reno. And they have a, I guess you could say, a, a tough childhood. Uh, not really, I guess, well, I mean, if you compare it to, say, how most kids live in third world countries, uh, I guess technically a childhood wouldn't be considered that rough. But still, it's... Either way, they still, you know, they grow up having a pretty rough childhood. I, I believe they never really knew their father that much. I mean, I guess he had lived with them for a while, but eventually left. So they were just raised by their mom. And by the time they were teenagers, their mother had uh, come down with some kind of cancer. She contract. I mean, she starts showing all these... Symptoms I'm familiar with a certain kind of cancer, and I don't really think I don't remember it being detailed as to exactly what kind of cancer she had, or maybe I just forgot that part. <laughs> but uh, so the mom has can gets cancer, and then eventually she dies, and they, I guess, kind of like have a very quiet funeral for her. So as not to draw attention to them because of the fact that they were still underage and they didn't want to, they didn't want to be broken up by any kind of, uh, you know, child protective service. And uh, they also, you know, they didn't want to be put in foster care. So they ended up uh, pretty much either dropping out of high school, getting terrible paying jobs. <laughs> uh and at the same time, around the same time, it's when they both, uh, I guess, became prolific uh, artists, creative types. Um, by which I just mean that, you know, because also too much of the book, it's filled with a lot of stories that uh, Frank tells Jerry Lee. And he makes up all these really interesting stories, just kind of on the spot and... Uh, so, and I, I, that's definitely one of the aspects I like about this novel. There's a lot of stories within stories. <laughs> uh, and also, too, I mean, I guess he mostly tells these stories to Jerry Lee because in order to calm him down or just get him to get his mind off certain things. Because at some point, I think, well, pretty much in the beginning of the novel, I don't know why I didn't say this to begin with. <laughs> Uh, in the beginning, uh, something happens where Jerry Lee is driving down this road, I guess, and it's it's a road that he had driven down many times before. And then one day, this kid on a bicycle just comes out of nowhere and slams into the hood of the car. And I guess he he either instantly dies or he dies later from his injuries. Uh, and of course, Jerry Lee, he, he freaks out and he just, he left the scene. So essentially, you know, he became part of this hit and run incident. And he ran back to tell Frank about it. And then, you know, because I guess Jerry Lee was so freaked out about it. Uh, and Frank 
was also beginning to freak out about her because neither of them knew whether or not this kid that was hit, whether or not he was still alive or if he was severely injured or, um, and I think most, for the most part, Jerry Lee, he, he was scared of going to prison. He didn't want to go to prison. And, um, so the two of them just left. They left Reno, uh, got in the car and drove around. Um, just kind of like, just to get away from, uh, the actual area in which the crime took place, the hit and run took place. And, uh, that's pretty much, uh, the bulk of what the story revolves around. And again, like I said, there's all these stories that are within stories. And also too, Frank, during different moments, he reminisces about, uh, I guess some girl that he used to date and who, uh, he really liked and but she for whatever reason ultimately broke things off with him well I guess technically they both broke things off with each other eventually and <laughs> I don't want to give away too many details I mean but it's definitely interesting I do like the story I mean uh, I do like that uh one of the reviews I read about it, I don't remember where I saw, like a blurb or something. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a blurb like on the cover in which it says it's uh, an, an unapologetic ode to self-defeat. <laughs> and actually, I would say that definitely very succinctly sums up this novel, an ode to self-defeat. Uh but I think I'd also, I would also say it's also an ode to uh, mediocrity, an ode to just everyday struggle, everyday, yeah, just everyday struggle. And I mean, granted, you know, it's, each of us has our own struggles to deal with on a regular basis. But yeah, it's definitely an ode to struggle, an ode to self-defeat. Uh, overall, I, I would give this four out of five stars. Uh, yeah, the only thing I don't like is the end. I mean, I definitely don't want to give away the ending, but uh, it is a sad ending. And but I guess I I, I guess there really wouldn't have been any other any better way to end it. Uh, it's. I mean, I guess ultimately this is like one of those stories that that's about brotherly, uh, like some kind of brotherly relationship, and which I've always found interesting. I mean, I don't know. I mean, me personally, I don't have any brothers. I've never had any brothers. I mean, I guess you could say I, I have had close friends growing up who I, at some point I would have liked to have considered them to be my brothers. But other than that, I've never, you know, uh, I've never known, I probably never will know uh, what it's like to have a brother. Certainly not, you know, biological blood brother. So uh, I guess that's why I was originally drawn to this novel, this particular story and um, because yeah, I've always found the brother dynamic, brother brother dynamic, to be pretty interesting. Huh. I don't know. Maybe not everybody does, but I always have, as well as you know, brother sister dynamic, sister sister dynamic, just sibling dynamic. I guess. Oh, uh, maybe I. Was, Maybe I should get some kind of degree in that. I, <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, ultimately I get a four out of five stars. Uh, and I did also recently rewatch the movie adaptation, so I am going to do some kind of review of that and compare the two. So, yeah. And of course I will say, obviously, the novel is much more rich with details. So, 
obviously one would expect such a thing so uh, so yeah again you have four out of five stars and that'll do it for my review of the motel life by Willie Vlauten Vlauten and thanks for watching as always till next time don't forget to keep it real keep on rocking and peace